The idea of flying a kite might not sound particularly radical, but ever since a revolutionary new type of kite evolved from an art school project in the early 70s, it was clear that kites had the potential to become a radical sport. Andrew Jones and Ray Merry realized this potential and the power kite was born. Over 25 years later, their company has become one of the major suppliers of power kites. Power kites have become enormously popular because unlike traditional type kites, they do exactly what their name suggests. They generate power. simple this is the right hand side is connected to the right hand side of the kite if you pull that it turns to the right flies this way if you pull the left hand side it flies this way and depending on where you go within what we call the wind window you can get a different amount of power so if you go down through the middle it actually pulls you off but unless you just want to be dragged along you'll need to control that power and use the right sized kite Today we've got a wind direction, which is going this way. If you're in the centre of the wind here, you fly the kite within what looks to be a quarter of a sphere. It also extends vertically this way. The most power is directly downwind, in this area here. As you move to the edge of what we call the window, around in this shape, it gets less powerful. So what we do for power kites is we choose a kite which has the correct power off wind in the least powerful zone so that you're almost moving and then when you want to get a boost for jumps and things you fly it at 45 degrees back across the window into the most powerful area just here so it gives you a really big boost. All of that means the kite generates more than enough power to lift you off the ground. And because the kite can be flown at almost 90 degrees to the wind, and the rider can move at almost 90 degrees to the kite, the kite can be used to pull something around the course. So, the next logical step for power kiting is to attach it to a small three-wheeled vehicle, and thus the sport of kite bugging was born. And no one knows more about kite bugging than Jason Furness. I've been bugging for about four years, four or five years. Um, I, I trained a lot on the beach and stuff, and I thought I was the best in the world, and I thought it was amazing on buggy. And I turned up an event one day to race and I found out that I wasn't. It wasn't long before all that changed, however, and Jason was eventually to win the Kite Buggy World Cup. But Jason and his sponsors don't like to rest on their laurels and are always looking for something new. So, in 1998, they decided to try their hand at kite surfing. I think quite a bit in Africa, we made some films out there for Flexifor and we went over there and uh, tried out the surfing side of it. There were some lakes and the sea and stuff and uh, got on the board and there wasn't that much wind but you could just see that it was it was like the next step. It's a 7.2 metre ram air kite that we use as a power source for the kite surfing. We use this one when it's very light winds obviously because if you put this up in a big wind it'll just lift you straight off the ground. This is the board, uh, pretty much a standard 8 foot gun, a bit narrower than a standard surfboard. The main difference is the foot straps and the positioning to get the weight balance right. These are the things that keep your feet on when you're doing big airs, so you can actually lift it out of the water. Flexifoil may be the biggest power kite manufacturers, but kite surfing is very new, and around the world other manufacturers like Whippaker and F1 have been coming up with totally different ideas about kites and boards. From Hawaiian Lou Wangman on a wakeboard, to owner of F1 veteran Raphael Sell on his own designs. So, in April 99, the Flexifoil team packed their bus and drove to France for the Mondial de Vent, the first ever international kite surfing competition. They wanted to see what the specialist surfing manufacturers were doing, and they wanted to see if Jason could emulate his kite buggy in success. There were going to be three different disciplines to the competition. Well, they're going to have a freestyle event, basically go out and pull off airs, you know, make some you know, make hand drags or... Maybe some 
nice jibes, you know, catching the board, however mad you want to get, you know, 360s, 720s, doing the freestyle side of it. And they gave a course race, and it's going to have like uh, three or four boys out in, in the water, and you race out to the marks, drive around the marks, and you're racing like that. And you're going to have another a heat where they're going to have buoys in the water, and um, you have to sort of jump the buoy. Jason was confident about the course race because his buggy experience meant that, like a yachtsman, he could tack with ease and drive upwind. But his heart began to sink when he saw the weather. The problem is the wind gusts from like 30 mile an hour to 60 mile an hour, like that. Then it will drop down to 10 mile an hour. And if you've got a foil above your head, one minute you need two meter, the next minute you need six meter, the next minute you need four meter, then you're getting pulled all over the place. So now he had two major handicaps, the fact he wasn't a surfer and the awful weather. But even some of the most experienced surfers, like Hawaii and Lou Wayman, shared his reservations about the wind strength. Well, I'm pretty used to windy conditions, however, this is twice as windy as, um, as I'm used to. So the, the disadvantage I have right now, I think, is um, I'm really used to the, the size kite that I usually ride, and I don't really feel comfortable on smaller kites, which is the trend right now to, to deal with the wind. So I think what I'm going to do is stick with the larger kites and just hold on for all more and um, I'm hoping it'll pay off. On the day of the course race the wind had died considerably so Jason had the chance to get some vital points on the scoreboard. As expected he hadn't done too well on the big air and freestyle days but his navigational skills meant he had a good chance of winning the course racing heat. Jason got off to a brilliant start. It looked like his sailing expertise would easily match the surfing skills of the rest of the pack. But then the unthinkable happened. The wind died off completely. It got so weak it looked like nobody could make the upwind leg back to the beach. Everybody waited. And then a figure appeared on the horizon and it became clear that Jason's kiting skills were more than a match for the surfer's experience. His expertise had paid off because none of his rivals completed the course. Whilst the others had to use the rescue boats to get back, Jason's success meant he finally scored some vital points on the overall championship. I ended up running ninth, not ninth, you know, overall, and I was pleased and I was happy with that, definitely being in the top ten, yeah, that was good. 